Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here on the Scoop Studio at SMT Nuremberg, and I'm joined by Robert from Mentor, a Siemens company. Thanks for stopping by. Always good to chat. Last time we talked about the we spoke, we talk, talked about the acquisition. It's been a while now. The integration has taken effect. How's that going in terms of products and what's the response been like from the market? For us, this is an amazing story that we're actually receiving. I mean, I can only talk a little bit about uh, the products themselves. The rest, of course, that's uh, offense for me. But uh, the products, to see that uh, Mentor was always extremely strong in the whole electronic flow doing the CAD design, the DFM, the process preparation for the equipment and the MES for electronics. Now merging with Siemens that is very strong in all the mechanical design, uh, the execution, the line build up, the factory build up and the MES for discrete manufacturing, medical, semiconductor, bringing this together. It's for me amazing. It, it, it's just a journey. When we talk about point solutions for each individual product, we see competitive solutions out there, but as a whole, we have not found a single company that has it all. And the opportunities are behind this, it's for me something that I could never dream of, that I would be part of such a huge story. So I'm really excited about what's happening. And when you look at that from a customer facing point of view, the customers are looking at their factory, but they're looking at their supply chain, they're looking at their whole ecosystem, they're looking at design, they're looking at recycling and end of life. It's, it's a very, very broad requirement that, that customers need now. That's absolutely right. I mean, there's multiple trends that are happening. Let's say uh, one is like the, the lot size one, for instance, right? Lot size one. So what does that mean? How much time do you actually have to ramp up to quality? Well, you have one boat. The first boat has to be delivered with quality. Then you have all the variations that you have because lot size one means a lot of different variants, combination, customization, personalization, whatever that means. How do you make sure that thousands or millions of variations fit together at the end of the day when you're in the final box build area? It all has to start with a virtual product design and uh, actually both together like the electronics as well as the mechanic. And for me, it's always a very good example. Okay, you have done that, and the first product is great. You have to redo really it again. Now purchasing decided, you know, that same connector from the other company a little cheaper. I mean, the pins, they fit perfectly. The holes are slightly different, and you reach the box build area, and it doesn't fit anymore. So if you don't have EKID and MKID communicate with each other, you don't find these problems when in the design phase, it's where they belong. The same goes for the process, then you have a virtual twin of the process itself, where you simulate how the whole manufacturing actually is. And then you have the real process, and the real product at the end, where you can now start with a framework to do the closed loop back. And when you have an open framework, there's a massive amount of opportunities for customers to bring their own knowledge, to create their own knowledge. So the ex acceleration of the whole Industry 4.0 concept is just yeah. growing and growing. Yeah. And so we have received a tremendous amount of positive feedback that this is a system that customers, especially large ones, they really think about this is what they need now in order to go to the next level. Yeah, and it's that digital twin of product, digital twin of process, digital twin of the ecosystem. Everything can be modeled and it has to be 100% modeled ahead if you are going to put a product down in a lot size of one and expect it to be expect it to be right first time. You mentioned about the interoperability and the interconnectivity. Inevitably that brings us to standards. There's been a lot of talk about standards. The sense I have from EMS is from OEMs is they don't see one standard as a particular solution. There's a lot there's a lot on offer out there that could work. Yeah the, the challenge is always uh, how good a standard is first of all. I mean uh, we have seen a lot of standards fail in the past. They were many, many times driven by a certain company. This company wanted Camex, the next one wanted Zex Jam, and so on. So the equipment suppliers, how do they respond to it? Uh, they typically add an adapter. This is now a Camex adapter. This is now uh, whatever Zex Jam adapter. This is whatever VDI adapter, whatever. And it will continue to do this. For us, it would be really, really great if a standard would be out that, that actually takes off. But there's a second problem always with standards. Okay, now you. Uh, there's a huge hype about CFX, for instance, and if that really comes, it would save us a lot of work. But what happens to 10,000s of equipment in the field? 
you cannot say let's just replace all of them to get a smart factory. So we still need solutions that we have to connect to the existing equipment and standardize this. The other piece of standards where it's always a little critical is uh, what about uh, some innovations? So if they are not supported by a standard, you would actually slow down innovation. So you need to give also companies a freedom to develop. So while standards, I believe in general, are very good and would make our life much, much easier, sometimes it's not so easy to implement. And the last piece that I always miss a lot is when you talk about standards, one thing is quite easy to take the data in a standard way out of the machine. But is the definition always the same? When I say cycle time, what does it mean? Does every machine vendor implement it with the same definition? If you don't do it, you get then 10 cycle times, but you can't compare it. So which one is then the bottleneck if you have data that is not defined the same way? So if a standard can solve that problem, that would be so huge. Yeah. But I don't see this being addressed at this moment. Yeah. Maybe I don't know enough about it, but at the moment I don't see it. Yeah, it has to be contextualized. It has to be providing enough data to make good decisions and, and reliable decisions with, with reliable data behind it. So what, what's next in terms of product development? There must be so many um, exciting opportunities in the development teams as these two companies come together. Oh yeah, yeah. there's uh, a lot of happening at the moment. I don't can talk too much about it, but things that are coming out uh, uh, or basically have already reached a level that I can talk about it. For instance, uh, Siemens has a very nice planning tool, Projector. Uh, it's very strong for all discrete uh, manufacturing roles, but it misses a little bit the business logic of S&T, where the Valor Portfolio for Mento has a dedicated planning tool uh, that has all the understanding of, okay, to heat up an oven, it takes uh, less time than to cool it down and things like this, the family setup concept and whatever. So there's a lot of specific SMT knowledge in it. Those products have been already integrated and are now reaching the market. So all of a sudden, customers that came to us and said, we want to have a standard planning system, said we, we struggle a little bit. Our plant in Thailand actually is really SMT heavy driven, so we like use. But our plant in California, it's more mechanical, use is not as good, but the project is very nice or whatever, and now we have one solution for both. Uh, so those are solutions that you will see now more and more coming to the market over the next few months where actually Mentor and the Siemens portfolio are merging into a even better solution for the market with the core competencies. And the only thing I can say is I was very concerned uh, when you join a company and you don't know who makes all those decisions. But the decisions that I've seen, they all make so much sense and I'm really excited to see the new products coming out now. Yeah, yeah as the businesses integrate, the products will integrate, that'll make the customers happy and it'll all go from there. Robert, lovely to see you. Thanks for stopping by to chat. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Phil.